Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of the Mama Pies Before the Lesson podcast. I'm your host, Carlos Smiley. On last week, we read, because it was written in a book, the promise of a faithful God that in due time, on God's time, that he would bring his chosen people back home. But in the meantime, the prophet Jeremiah had a, had to tell a, a hard-headed, sin-filled set of people that were hell-bent on doing what they wanted to do, when they wanted to do it, that they would have to live in their consequences. Shuttled out of the home, their homeland, into captivity, into a strange land, Babylonia to be exact. Psalms 137 tells us that their captors mocked them on the way to captivity by asking them to sing us one of the songs of Zion. Their now humble response was, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Ain't it funny when reality hits after God releases us to our own devices, we find humility and we adopt a more remorseful spirit. Hey, I'm just saying. On Sunday, the title of the lesson is Restoration. Scriptural basis of our lesson is Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 37. So the question that I have, and maybe you do too, is how did we get from there? An exiled preacher doing what he couldn't help himself but to do, which was obeying the calling on his life to preach the word in season and out of season to a bunch of folk that did everything they could do to kill him and his gift because they didn't want to hear the message that he was required by God to deliver. But he continued to document in a book to his brothers and sisters that were now in a strange land. He continued to encourage them while telling them to settle in. It's going to be a minute before better days return. How do we get from there to here? Restoration. As evil and self-centered as man had become, the only reason that man has a modicum of an opportunity for restoration is documented in a book. Specifically, Numbers 23 and 19 tells us God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, Has he said it? Shall he not perform it? Has he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? That's it. It ain't because of nothing that we did. It's all about who he is. Hopefully, after today's conversation, we'll gain clearer insight into how God operates. How he is faithful, even when we're not. How a promise by God meant something then, and it means something now. Now let's dig into this thing and see, can't we figure some stuff out? So here we are, Jeremiah, exiled in Egypt, Judah, exiled in Babylon. Jeremiah, God's handpicked servant from conception, tells us in the first chapter of Jeremiah, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Before I formed you in your mama's belly, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then Jeremiah, being Jeremiah, said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But then the Lord came back and said, Say less. For you shall go everywhere that I send you and to all that I shall send you and whatsoever I command you to say, that's what you say. Then God added, don't worry about the blowback and the pushback because I got you. Now, back in the day, you know, there was a preacher out of New York who went by the name of uh, of Reverend Ike. He used to tell his congregation, you can't lose with the stuff I use. But that's what he said. But we have to understand that God is about that action. He don't just talk it. He walk it 
like he talk it. Jeremiah then tells us that. Then the Lord put forth his hand, action, and touched my mouth, action, and said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, action. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. That's action. To root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Action. You see, the Lord is about it, about it. But Jeremiah, you know, it was an earthly, thankless job, but it had a heavenly crown attached to it. God told him to deliver a message of repentance to the people. Let them know that this was a, a non-negotiable. If they didn't repent, doom, destruction, and captivity was in their future. Through tears, through mental tolls, and physical assaults, Jeremiah did what God had purposed him to do. Judah was now in Babylon. Jeremiah was in Egypt. And the land of Judah was now in recovery mode because of their refusal to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Now, Jeremiah had begun to write to his brothers and sisters in captivity that better days were on the horizon. But first, there would need to be a pruning of the people, a changing of hearts and minds, an adjustment of attitudes. So in chapter 29, Jeremiah writes, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. In other words, settle in. You're going to be there for a while, 70 years to be exact. But that's because they didn't obey the law relative to the resting on the Sabbath. Jeremiah now pivots and we read once again, because it was written in a book, that after the pruning would have been accomplished, God's plan of restoration would then go into full effect. For thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then the promise of restoration by the Lord goes deeper. He tells his people in Jeremiah 31, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And there is hope in thine end, says the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. So on Sunday, we'll hear the Lord through Jeremiah further solidify his plan of restoration. He'll tell him, behold, the days come, says the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So now we know how we got from there to here. Jehovah Sabbath. The Lord of hosts, the God who reigns, he who declares his authority over all armies, both in the spiritual and earthly and over heaven and earth. He mandated it that it shall be. Looking forward to next week's lesson as we go back in and dig a little deeper here on the Before the Lesson podcast. Until next time, be blessed. Oh,